half in the bag. Oh my god, Jay. The fucking wildfires are out of control. Oh wait, that's California. <laughs> oh my god, Jay. The fucking snowstorms are out of control. I wish the fires would make their way this way. Can we have a comfortable warm meeting? Us up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We just like fold the country in half. Just kind of overlap, just just for like an hour. <laughs> just you to stump all the snow on the fires, and then just like a like a mad like a mad magazine. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, put yeah. them together and you have a new image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can can we ask our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? to do that for us. God, perform a miracle. Dump our fucking snow on the California wildfires. Well, I've got a great segue uh, oh. from Pet Cemetery to a, a very similar kind of movie. It's called Hole in the Ground. You know, when I was your age, I moved town once too. You'll settle in, sweetie. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Australian? New Zealand? Irish? Irish? And or Scottish? I was curious to see that. Yeah, um, great. Great. If you're looking for a slow, atmospheric, creepy, kind of very simple horror movie. Mm. Yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, a mother and son move into an old creepy house. And as you see in the trailer, there's a hole in the ground in the backyard. A big hole, like an acre. Uh, well, the little boy ends up going down in the hole, and then he comes back. And he's changed. And he's changed. Oh, okay. And there's a creepy old lady, and uh, there's some scares. Um, a creepy kid movie, uh, li much like The Prodigy, which I think you saw this year. Oh, but, yeah. Um, <laughs> I enjoyed The Prodigy. Yeah. We're not going to waste time talking about it, but it was fine. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, creepy kid movie, but but done tastefully and uh, not, not schlockily Hollywood style. Like as long, that, as, like long that as there's Babadook a good atmosphere. Movie. Remember the Babadook? Yeah. I enjoyed the Babadook. That director has a new movie out. I haven't seen it yet. It's yeah, Hobbs and Shaw? <laughs> That's what they do. <laughs> <laughs> you made an independent film that was mildly successful. Now we're going to give you Fast and Furious 12. Hey, who doesn't like checks? That's true. Well, speaking of horror pictures, since we're on a roll with that, so I'll talk about one that you might think is a horror movie, uh, but it becomes something else. It's called One Cut of the Dead. And it was, until a movie I just saw recently, it was my favorite movie I'd seen this year. It's a Japanese movie, um, and it's hard to talk about without getting into spoilers, because you gotta go in completely blind. Don't read anything about this movie, but the setup is... Um, the first, like, 40, 45 minutes, the first half of the movie is one continuous shot. Uh, actually one continuous shot, no, like, hidden cuts or anything. Uh, and it's, uh, uh, people making a movie in an old abandoned warehouse, they're making a zombie movie. Uh, but then there's real zombies outside, and they have to defend them off. It's all done in one shot. They're going in the building, out of the building, running around. Um... But there's lots of weird little moments where you're like, that's an odd choice, like as far as filmmaking goes. But then after that first 45 minutes, it takes a complete shift, uh, it goes in a completely different direction that recontextualizes the entire thing and explains why those odd little eccentric moments are in there. And I can't say any more than that without giving it away, but it was one of the most satisfying and like feel good movies I've seen in a very long time. Up there with Dolomite. If you like movies about mo filmmaking, uh, it's really charming and fun. Can't say any more than that. Uh, but if you're, if, even if you're not like, a, like if you're sick of zombies, which I think everybody is at this point. Um, but you know, you make a good movie with zombies in it, it still holds up. So what? even if, even if you don't care about zombies, even if you're not a big horror fan, uh, stick with this. Even though you might not be into it for the first half hour or so, and, and very, very charming and really well made. Well, speaking of the opposite of all those things, let's talk about The Dead Don't Die. <laughs> and speaking of Oh, that's of right. Zombies. Another zombie movie. Yeah. Well, this is like, this is like more segues than a Weird Al Yankovic video. You see me roll on my 
Starring Adam Driver, who's also in something else. He's on a TV show. Called The Rise of Skywalker. Called Rise of Skywalker's Pants. <laughs> I was going to say, he's on Girls. He's on Girls. And, but, yeah. uh, he was in some other movies. He, he was, was in Jim Jarmusch's last movie, yeah, too. Yeah, the, 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 pa the paper boy. Or? The paper <laughs> Patterson, yeah. Patterson, Patterson, yeah. Patterson, he's yeah. a writer. I thought yeah. paper writing. Which I never saw that movie. I, I'm, I am a big fan of Jim Jarmusch. I've liked a lot of his movies, but... I, I heard, I think I saw the trailer for Patterson and I heard what it was about, which is Adam like, Driver drives a bus and he meets people that inspire him to write his stories and, and it's a Jim Jarmusch movie. I was like, oh, I've seen it. I just saw the movie in my brain. I don't need it. to bother. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was a little more curious about this one because, yeah, it's got the slight horror aspect to it. Copy. He did a vampire movie a few years ago called Only Lovers Left Alive. That's really, really good. Jim Jarmusch? Yep. Yeah. Uh, Tilda Swinton's in that. Tom, uh, Tom Hiddleston. Mm. Uh, and I liked that movie a lot. And I was like, oh, Jim Jarmusch. It's not really horror, but it had vampires. And um, So I was curious about this one. And I liked the first half until... And it's weird to say Jim Jarmusch movie isn't going anywhere because that's kind of his whole thing. They're very, you know, laid back and uh, very dry. Oh, yuck. But this one, I just kind of lost interest because it just felt so meandering. But the first half, I enjoyed quite a bit. But, yeah, this, I, would, I wouldn't call it meandering. It, it felt very um, forward-moving. Um, the first half did. Yeah. It's, uh, the problem with it is, I mean, okay, Adam Driver and Bill Murray, great. And Tilda Swinton, great. Um, yeah, the, the relationship between the two cops, Adam Driver and Bill Murray, was the best thing in the movie. Yes, of course. They're, they're so dry, and, and, and they even break the fourth wall a couple times with referencing the song, uh, the, the soundtrack. What is that song, Ronnie? It's The Dead Don't Die by Sturgill Simpson. Why does it sound so familiar? Well, because it's the theme song. But then they talk about the script. I read the script. Jim gave me a copy. And you're it's, like, what? Yeah, the meta aspect was so underdeveloped. I was like, why is this in here? It was very weird. Yeah, it's like if you throw a meta uh, fourth wall breaking thing in just a regular movie for one thing and don't follow up on it. And so that, that was odd. It made me laugh. You know, and I think at one point Bill Murray goes, uh, what are we ad-libbing now? Yeah. Something and, I, like and I thought maybe that was like a real take. Mm. And so the movie felt like he was just making a movie and not caring at all. And, and so it's like... That's why I was waiting for it to pull back towards the end and, and expand on that, and it never really did. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah it needed to go bigger um, with that concept. I mean, the, the zombie stuff was fun. There are some good gags, some good, like, Tilda Swinton with her sword. And <laughs> He's got samurai swords. I like dusty zombies. I don't know if I've seen dusty zombies yeah, before. Yeah. And the, the, the lady yelling for Chardonnay. <laughs> Chardonnay. Carol Kane, it was a Scrooge reunion. Yeah. Her and Bill Murray. It seemed to have a quasi message about environmentalism or politics that didn't really solidify. Yeah. Uh, Steve Buscemi has a, uh, not a Make America Great Again hat, it says Make America White Again. Yeah, it's like trying to push it if it's too too far where it yeah. seems stupid. Well, yeah, and then so it's like, okay, are is he saying like, the, Trump voters or zombies or like politics in general, people have become zombified. And then there's like a consumer element, consumerism angle too, with the people looking at their phones, mm. which is, you know, George Romero-esque with yeah. the zombies in the mall. And so I'm like, oh, they're doing this. Consumerism, politics, or environmentalism, yeah. because they talk about fracking, polar fracking. Mm -hmm. But they, they say it's on the polar ice caps, and then it ca uh, causes the axis of the earth to spin and fucks up everything, mm -hmm. which bring the dead back to life. So, yeah. yeah. And then Tilda Swinton's an alien. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the movie. Yeah. Were you distracted at all during the, the ending? Like, they're fighting the zombies in the cemetery, and it's very clearly day for night. Oh, yeah, I noticed that. That was the bugging me. Yeah. yeah, I noticed that. Don't do day for night ever. 
But uh, yeah, that's the thing is that's why I enjoyed the first half just as this laid back kind of really dry Jim Jarmusch comedy. And then it's like, oh, he's trying to say something, something or yeah. many things. And it's still just kind of, I don't know, fizzles out. It's like, uh, yeah, a laid back zombie movie. I mean, you take the the king of them all, Shaun of the Dead, yeah. where you have kind of slacker characters who treat a zombie apocalypse as as they should, mm -hmm. uh, throwing records at, at zombies yeah. and sort of poking fun at the genre. But Shaun of the Dead crescendoed with great characters and emotion yes. at the end. Three! The boy that got in my mom! Um, and this just fizzled out with some sort of Quasi message mm -hmm. that n wasn't quite clear. It's weird because, like with a Jim Jarmusch movie, they're usually very laid back and very simple, um, but they feel focused on like characters, specific characters, or in the case of like Night on Earth, it's a series of vignettes of different characters. And this movie, like, there's enough kernels there that feel like it's trying to say something that don't feel developed, as opposed to just a simple story of this small town with these zombies in it. Yeah. So it feels underdeveloped, which is a weird thing to say about a Jarmish movie, but he planted those things in there. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fork in the road situation, mm -hmm. and you crash in the middle. Yeah. Because, yeah, you go either go with a message uh, in a metaphorical sense with zombies and whatnot, or you go for a dry zombie comedy mm -hmm. that you're, you're going to have a, a fresh take on. The fresh take with Shaun of the Dead was the comedic Yes. Elements that hadn't really been done too much before. Mm -hmm. and, uh, well, and the fact that the zombies in that are still treated seriously. The horror right. aspects of that are still there. Yeah, but like I said, Shaun of the Dead comes to, comes to a head with, with good characters that you care about. Yes. And when your characters are s too dry and sarcastic and self-aware, and then it's like, okay, then, eh, fork in the road. Yeah. Fork in the brain. That girl's part Mexican. Hmm? Really? How can you tell? I have an affinity for Mexicans. They're like my favorite people. I like Adam Driver a lot as an actor. Oh yeah, he's good. Um, and, and obviously, everybody loves Bill Murray. His big news story was late, lately was that he applied for a job at uh, uh, P.F. Chang's. What? <laughs> yes. Just cause? Cause he's Bill Murray? He, he, yes, cause he's Bill Murray. <laughs> he, he was at, uh, it was an airport P.F. Chang's. <laughs> In I some random city, this. yeah, and he's like, he's like, oh, and he filled out the application for P.F. Chang's while he was there, and he's like, he's like, they, it looks like it would be fun, <laughs> and then he left, and they're like, hey, we'll hire you, Bill Murray, yeah. if you want to work at our P.F. Chang's. Yeah, no one's going to turn down Bill Murray. Right, so, uh, he's, he's an interesting, interesting character, that guy. He's what you would call a, probably a lovable asshole. I'm sure. Someone like Harrison Ford might just be an asshole. Yeah. Or like Jim Cameron. James Cameron. James, good old James Cameron. He's probably just just a grade A asshole. Yeah. You know, but Bill Murray is a lovable asshole who doesn't give a fuck about anything, <laughs> but at the same time, still got to love him. Yeah. Well, Mike, I saw a Marvel movie, a Marvel movie. Did you marvel at it? Talk about Spider-Man. <laughs> We were done with Marvel movies after uh, Avengers Endgame. That felt like such a, a strong kind of closure to that whole thing. Uh, but I did finally see Spider-Man Far From Home. What did you think of Spider-Man Far From Home? It was fine. This is why we didn't do a half in the bag on it, because it was just fine. It was entertaining. It, it kind of, it's weird because it's like, we enjoyed the first Spider-Man, Spider-Man Homecoming. Mm. I think we both liked it quite a bit. But this isn't a case of like, oh, I liked the Spider-Man movie. And then three or four years later, you get the sequel. It's like in between that last one and this one, we've seen fucking Spider-Man in like five other movies. Yeah. It's just like never, never ends. It never leaves your mind. You don't have any chance to miss Tom Holland as Spider-Man because he's in everything. This isn't just a sequel to a movie. It's, you know, a part of this bigger thing. And after Avengers Endgame, it was like, okay, we're done with that thing. So the, the smaller aspects of this one I liked. It was like a cute like teen comedy where the class goes on a trip to Europe. No, 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 uh, don't. Oh. Uh. Sorry? Uh. 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 Sorry? 
Uh, and I was like, oh, this is cute. This is charming. Oh, now Spider-Man has to fight. <laughs> seems like a movie that probably should have happened five years ago before the biggest cinematic event of, of the century. Yeah, like it touches on that, you know, the whole... Of course, yeah, uh, the, the events of the Avengers Endgame. Um, but yeah, it just feels like, oh, now we got another spider. Back to, back to normal, we got to take a class trip. Yeah, I mean, they got to keep going, so they're not just going to stop, even though from a creative standpoint, it would be nice to take a break, but... Uh, so Spider-Man... Mysterio is, turns out to be a villain, I assume. That's the thing, is like, even if you have a, a, a passing knowledge of comic books, you know who Mysterio is. So the I don't, entire arc but his of the name movie, is Mysterio. But the entire arc of the movie is, you, you can see coming, but it's Jake Gyllenhaal, and he's good. It's kind of funny, because he was potentially going to replace Tobey Maguire in Raimi Spider-Man 2, when uh, Tobey Maguire hurt his back or something. My back! Oh, my back! The most exciting appearance of the movie was by Peter Billingsley, who played Ralphie in A Christmas Story. He had one small scene in the original Iron Man movie, because he's friends with Jon Favreau, who directed that. Tony Stark was able to build this in a cave! With a box of scraps! Uh, and that character from the first Iron Man movie shows up in this, and it was the most exciting thing to me that happened in the entire film. It's like, ah, it's Ralphie. Hot diggity dog. You know what's on tonight? The two-hour Ghost Adventures uh, uh, show that uh, on Halloween <laughs> night, and I'm going to watch it. Well, speaking of haunted and spooky movies, I saw The Curse of La Llorona. It's technically connected to the Conjuring universe, right? Nobody cares. Sure it is. <laughs> <laughs> Does Annabelle make an appearance? No. Well, Annabelle got her own movie again this year. Yeah, third, uh, third or fourth. Annabelle Far From Home. <laughs> Annabelle Homecoming. Uh, Annabelle, Annabelle had a cameo in, in Shazam. That's true, yeah. If you will come for them. Who? I don't know. But, uh, okay, Curse of La Llorona, the lead actress in it is... Oh, it's Linda Cardellini. Yeah, the sister from... Uh, She's on Freaks and, Geeks. Freaks and Geeks. I think she was on Mad Men for a while. Yes, and... She's uh, Hawkeye's wife. She was on um, New Girl. Ah, okay. New Girl. Uh, she plays Zoe Deschanel's older sister. Hmm. She's a crazy older sister. Um, <laughs> this is all fascinating. <laughs> uh, but back to The Curse of La Llorona. Talk about something more interesting, like so, The Curse of La Llorona. Let me tell you all about this movie, right? I I just to correct you, it's pronounced La Llorona. Oh, yeah, yeah. My Sharona. That's unrelated, but... Oh, because oh, it's a double L. Mm -hmm. In Spanish, double L's, like like, like pollo. It was, just, it was just the Spanish word for chicken. Yes. Uh, it has a double L. So, yeah, yeah, L-O-R-O-N-A. -L yeah, you're right, you're right. Double L's equal Y's. I never took Spanish, so I don't know this shit. <laughs> but uh, I, I do know that double L's you pronounce as, uh, as Y's. Thank you, Jay. You're welcome. Thank you for, for checking my white privilege. <laughs> <laughs> so how was the film? Was it oh, boring as shit? It there was, was a curse. It? There was a curse of Ya Yorona. Uh, I think it was like an like a old lady, a ghost. And then, um, <laughs> uh, I guess it's a it's a it's a, a Spanish or Mexican folklore kind of thing. Yeah. It's, uh, get that. Do that. <laughs> um, and, and based on a true story. Based on a true story. With fifteen quotation marks around it. And the, like the chupacabra, the chupacabra was in it. What really? Yeah, that was their pet pet in the house, the chupacabra. Oh my god. <laughs> and, um, but okay, I think oh. Oh, La La Llorona. I think it was the ghost lady lost a child. And so she wants to take your child.
and then uh, and then it ended. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got on that. That's all I got. I don't wow, what remember. a shit year for movies. I don't, yeah, that's what I'm saying is like, uh, I, I've watched much more TV. We can talk about TV. Mm. Um, TV is, is, is tough because there's so much. You know what's kind of fascinating too though is, is, I mean, I think we've talked about this before, but TV is like, has, has, a, the, has like a burnout possibility with shows because they oh, are not yeah. episodic. Yeah, yeah. I just started a show with Paul Rudd in it on Netflix. Oh, the, yeah, where there's two of them? Yes. Yeah. And and it's the first episode is 30 minutes, and it's perfectly the first act of a movie. Oh, sure. And I'm like... Uh, and it's only like six or eight episodes, right? Yeah. So it's basically a long movie. Yeah, but, I mean, you know, it's one of those things where it comes back, it could come back for season two, season three, and it's like... Yeah, I'm like, I only need two more episodes. I just need, I need to, him, yeah. what is, how is he gonna handle this situation and then how is it gonna get resolved? Mm -hmm. and, and it's technically a TV show, but it's really long movie. And then you have shows that become popular that I just give up on because I want the movie to end. <laughs> Do you sure, know what I mean? Sure. And I could list 10 of them where it's like, and then some of them just get canceled. So uh, they're not quite episodic. Yeah. They just keep going. But the, the quality is there as far as like the way they're executed and acted and writing, all that yeah. stuff is really good. Uh, sometimes better than movies. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't see the La Llorona movie because it just looks like, why? Cheap to make, teenagers watch it. Horror Spooky. film, yeah. yeah. Although I think that one did flop, I think. You gotta have something more to it. Not really. <laughs> what else you got? <laughs> Uh, well, let's shift gears to something good. Uh, something great, in fact. I saw The Lighthouse. Tell me, what's a timber man want with being a wiki? Oh, right. Uh, th this surpassed One Cut of the Dead for me as far as best movie of the year. Oh, my goodness. Um, this is, of course, from Robert Eggers. Who it's directed, in black and white. It's in black and white. It's in, I don't even think it's four by three. I think it's even narrower. Um, it's like a ghost story. No, it's not. I, I would hesitate to even call it a horror film. It's from I mean, Robert I'm talking Eggers. about the format. The ghost, a ghost story had. Oh, the, the movie, a ghost story. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, it had the. Yeah, yeah, the, the same aspect like a, ratio. Yeah, like Sixteen millimeter with the. With I thought the, you were saying the lighthouse was a ghost story. No, no, no. No. I don't know what it's about other than a lighthouse. Well, it, it's it's uh, the movie. It reminded me the most of is The Shining, uh, because one, they're both about people in isolation going crazy. And there's even a point in this movie when Willem Dafoe chases uh, Robert Pattinson with an axe. Mm. Or did he? That's the whole thing. Unreliable narrator stuff going on. Uh, but like The Shining, it, it has a very kind of simple story of just, yeah, these two guys stuck out in this lighthouse, slowly going crazy uh, and, and getting drunker and drunker. It's like a the cinematic ver uh, retelling of a filming of an episode of Best of the Worst. <laughs> but, but like The Shining, y there's a lot you can read into it. There's like hints of Greek mythology and like the story of Prometheus, not the Ridley Scott film, but the actual story. Um, it's kind of like, because the guy directed The Witch, which The Witch is like a straight up horror film. Yep. Um, this one, there's a couple kind of creepy moments, but it's really more of a bizarre, surreal character drama um, like a really good student film. Why would you say student film? Because no, it's in black and white. No. Oh. Well, that's 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 worth pointing out though, because it's like this director is so good at like not just having interesting techniques, but where it actually ties into the movie. It's not just in black and white. You know, it's it's shot on old camera lenses because that's the period that the movie takes place in, and it's all like in service of the story and in service of the film. Wait, wait. This just came through on Twitter. Robert Eggers is directing Hobbs and Shaw 2. Watch you spill your beans. But like The Witch is a very, uh, I don't know, feminine movie. It's about a girl kind of becoming a woman and becoming her own individual person, stripping away from her family. And this one is like the polar opposite. It's a very masculine movie. It's about two men left alone, going crazy, there's some homoerotic stuff, there's 
uh, mermaid vaginas. It's very, there's a lot of like sexual tension. Uh, it's a whole lot going on. It's just the first movie I've seen in forever where like the minute it was over, I wanted to just watch it again. Because mm. I think it would uh, take on a different interpretation and rewatch where it's like. Like, like Hobbs and Shaw? Like Hobbs and Shaw too. I can't wait for Robert Eggers to do Hobbs and Shaw too. How long have we been on this rock? Five weeks? Two days? Help me to recollect. I love The Witch. It was like my favorite movie of, I don't know, the last decade or whatever, but I think I might like The Lighthouse more. Okay, well, that's that's perfectly okay. There, there, there's so much shit going on in it, uh, but it still works. It's not just all like, you gotta figure it out. Like, it works as a story. Um, You're satisfied other, at the end. It's, it doesn't leave you, like, confused. No, it's not one of those where it just about. cuts to black and you're like, what? The last shot of the movie is fantastic. Um, and yeah, Willem Dafoe farts a lot. Uh, <laughs> there's some really great monologues. Robert Pattinson just screaming at Willem Dafoe about how much he stinks. Just a really, really great stuff. A great actor movie, a great filmmaking movie, and uh, a solid story. There's a wonderful shot. This is less than subtle, but I, like I've mentioned, there's a lot of the weird, like kind of sexual frustration stuff because it's these two men that are just stranded in the middle of nowhere. But there's a shot of the actual lighthouse, which is of course very phallic looking, with the camera's completely sideways on it, and then it goes like this. I was like, ah, that's a boner. And it is a really funny movie too. It's got that really kind of dark, dry humor to it, um, which The Witch didn't have. That movie was so stark and serious. But how long is it? Um, I saw, I saw Ma <laughs> <laughs> with, with Octavia Spencer while you were watching The Lighthouse. Did it leave you with a lot to, to think about and interpret? Just, yeah, like you said, I had to rewatch it again. Yeah, yeah. Get all the subtleties. Uh, I didn't see Ma. I actually wanted to see it because it looked mildly campy, was it? It, it wasn't. Oh. I mean, it was, it was serviceable and it was, it was fine. You guys want to party like rock stars? Follow me. Let's get drunk! Let Octavia um, Spencer go crazy. I know, it, it, it never really reached like that peak oh. potential of, of being goofy and self-aware as it should have. Yeah. Um, it just kind of turned out to be a sad villainous character and, the, and then the teen characters were so bad. Oh. Um, you know, interesting premise and, uh, but just kind of petered out. I was like, Octavia Spencer finally gets her her lead performance. She's always like background character. So yeah, she's yeah, always yeah. the best friend. The best friend, yeah. And, and then Remember the, her in uh, Shape of Water. Yes. She's good in it, yes, yeah, yes. she's, the, she's the, the friend. But then now, now she gets to like go crazy and this is her like uh, 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 Kathy Bates, you know, misery kind of role where she's just bonkers and yeah, yeah, yeah. They should have played up the camp. It looked like it was going to be kind of a slightly silly horror movie, but <sighs> that's not the case. No. If you have Octo Octavia Spencer like partying with high schoolers, like there's limitless potential for comedy. Were, I think they were going like yeah, the way it's or when you watch the trailer, you see that and you're like, oh my gosh. That's I, why I was curious about it. It's like I don't know. She has she was like emotionally scarred when she was younger. Like bullied, mm. um, mocked. Oh, by so they gave her like a. She has a backstory. Like a backstory. Yeah, uh, she she. Liked, they tried to make a real movie. Uh, yeah, and then our our teens have a dated token black friend that she puts in white face at the end. Oh. So he could be white, and uh, and and I think they thought it would be creepy, and it just came off like odd and. Does no. she hack anybody up with a butcher knife? I think she stabbed somebody. Ah! Ah! Crazy Octavia Spencer running around with a knife, oh, killing yeah. teenagers would be wonderful schlock. Oh, she has a daughter that she keeps like locked upstairs that never is let out or is rarely let out. Um, while all the kids are partying downstairs, there's like a gate that separates her. She's tr trying to protect her obviously from yeah. the outside world, from being hurt. Um, so yeah, it goes more in that direction. Oh. It, it doesn't go in schlock, like like I'm gonna stab everybody and, yeah. and I'm crazy. 
Uh, it, it, it seems to take itself kind of seriously. That's it unfortunate. It doesn't let loose with the fun. No. I think I think they may have been may have been aiming a little higher than they should have. They should have aimed much much lower. Because Octavia Spencer is great. You know, she's a great actress. Yeah, she's good. I've seen her in nothing, but she's a great <laughs> actress. <laughs> I've seen her in her pivotal performance as Ma in. Ma. You know she's in the first Spider-Man movie, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movie? There's no featherweight division here, small fry. Next! Started there, now she's in... Ma. Mm -hmm. This is the most fun I've had in a long time. Movies like Ma or The Curse of La Llorona... Disposable. Well, there, there are things that I know will end. Like, unlike TV shows, <laughs> you know what I mean? Sure. I know this will end Yeah. in, in, in one hour and 28 minutes, and, and I don't have to keep watching it yeah. in order to ultimately be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's something Rich and I kind of talked about when we talked about The Boys, the Amazon series. Yeah, you know what? I never watched your show about it because <laughs> I hadn't watched The Boys yet. Oh, oh. And then I finally watched The Boys. Yeah, but that was, that was we talked about that, how it's like, oh, this is really well done, this is engaging and interesting, and then you get to the end and it's a cliffhanger, and you're like, oh, that's right, it's a TV show. Right. It's like, I wanted to see this conclude. It's this weird thing where like TV shows are trying to be more like movies, but they still have to continue on for seasons. Or they just stop. That's true, and you get no conclusion. Uh, did you ever watch um, uh, The Santa Clarita Diet? Oh yeah, that, I well, I started watching. I didn't really like it, but that was like three seasons, and then then it's just done. Yeah, I I, I watched the first two, yeah. and then it was like I, I've I got the gist. I, I I see what they're doing. I got the premise. Now I want a, a closure to and it. And then I, I don't I don't I don't even. Well, I was like I I could, I would have been happy with a closure, but but I didn't need more. Mm. So I don't know. There, the, the, it's it's a weird it's a weird. Um, it's a weird thing, yeah. because it's a certain like talk about Star Trek Discovery, right? Oh, sure. They're gonna just like this continuing thing, and and I'm like, yeah, I, I got it. Or it's not what what story do we want to tell? It's what do we have to do to make this last longer? Yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's it exactly. Yeah. It's um, some shows it works with, uh, like. I don't know. I always, I always talk about Breaking Bad because you've never seen it. I know, I know. Breaking Bad. Did you see El Camino? I have not seen El Camino. I, I should, I should have watched it before this. Um, but um, Breaking Bad is a really well done storyline yeah. that keeps going. And then you got shows, you got shows like Mad Men, where it's like they're almost like I don't know, soap operas, where it's like there is no written conclusion to a soap opera. It's just tune in every week yeah. and show you ads. Um, but and that's a continuing storyline that just keeps going. Mm. We we you know I like Star Trek shows, old Star Trek shows because it's an like encapsulated episode. Yeah, we set up a p problem, and then we have a conclusion. Or Here's a moral sit, sit dilemma cops. for this episode. Yeah. 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 Cheers or whatever. You know, sure. there's there's an episode and it ends. Yeah, and of course there are always going to be overarching little plot things that go on. But each you could pull an episode of Cheers out and watch it. Mm -hmm. You could pull an episode of Star Trek out and watch it. A lot of shows now, you can't do that. You can't pull out an episode of Maniac with Jonah Hill and just watch it. Right, right. <laughs> so you have to be invested from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if it doesn't hook you, it falls apart. Yeah. Like, uh, there, like uh, there's a show called The OA with Jason Isaacs, um, who was on Star Trek Discovery. Mm. Uh, and it had an interesting premise, and then, and then it just petered out. So yeah, I mean that's just the way it is. I think if they, if they hold in long enough to where they know the end is coming, then they can wrap it up. Yeah. And go, hey, we meant to end it there, <laughs> right? Sure we did. <laughs> then you have quality shit like Barry. Barry is uh, it's like Breaking Bad to where it's good, mm. to where I mean at least after the second season, it's much better than the first. It just gets better. Yeah. Um, but will it? Will it fall off the rails? I mean, that's that's always been the case with TV shows, but yeah, it used, it's weird because it used to be like TV felt so disposable, where it's like this is just something to put on to so, that we can have ads play, and now it's like movies feel more disposable with stuff like The Curse of La Llorona. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, hey, put it in theaters; it'll make money opening weekend, and then we move on. Right, right. It's not a piece of art. That it's not lasts a piece forever. of art. Yeah, just... The Lighthouse is a piece of art. The Lighthouse will last.
I, I, that's not faint praise when I compare it to a Stanley Kubrick film. So it's it's well well worth seeing. Uh, and then everything else this year was shit. What Marvel movies came out this year? Spider-Man Far From Home. I That's talked it. about it. I should have just reviewed, because the only reason I watched that movie was uh, I have a very nice Dolby Atmos surround sound set up, and I, I mostly watch old crap that's just in, like, two-channel stereo. So once in a while, you gotta you got to flex those speakers. And, sure. And it was a, a wonderful Dolby Atmos surround sound mix. And that's my review of Spider-Man Far From Home. Other than that movie, Spider-Man Far From Home, what were the summer movies this year? Yeah, even like bigger movies, there wasn't much out there this year, aside from Avengers Endgame. That was like the biggest movie of all time. Yeah. Now we got Star Wars to look forward to. And... That's, that's, a, that's an Endgame right there yeah. for Disney. <laughs> they should call the movie Endgame, Star Wars Endgame. Oh. Why not? Confuse people. Let them go think they're seeing something it's, else. It's, an int- it's going to be an interesting turning point because November marks the release of uh, the start of the Mandalorian TV show on Disney+. Plus. Which is weird timing. It feels like their focus should be on the main story, the main movies. It's almost like they're doing that in November to be like, this is Star Wars is other stuff. Remember like they, Star they're, Wars? Like they're anticipating Rise of Skywalker not being very successful. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, I think it's a very good bet the Rise of Skywalker will do well, at, at very least, its first weekend or two. Yeah. Kind of like Last Jedi. That, that you know, did really well. And then it, it tapered off yeah. more so than the first one. Uh, I'm, I'm very curious to see what the rise of Skywalker is um, and how it will do yeah. because it, it really is it's like a big turning point because I think they just announced that the Game of Thrones guys are not oh, doing they're gone. Yeah. another Star Wars thing and uh, uh, the, Ryan Johnson was supposed to have his own trilogy which seems like a very bad idea they've been talking about that for years yeah, now. and then it's like mm, and so it's like what are they going to do after Rise of Skywalker and then, I, I think after that, they're going to focus mostly on TV stuff. That yeah. seems to be the, the safer bet, because yeah. this new trilogy is not <laughs> not turned out how they probably hoped it would. Well, they didn't plan it out. Because they didn't plan it out. So it's their own fault yeah. um, for not for just throwing it in the lap of, of Ryan Johnson. And here, write and direct a, a sequel yeah. to this very important fucking thing. You have complete creative control. Go ahead. Ah. Um, that seemed weird. <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm wondering to see how, like, if the Mandalorian is successful, and, and versus the movie the it's like, yeah, it's a fork in the road. It's fork uh-huh. in the road. It's the Jim Jarmusch fork. <laughs> Which way do you go, TV or movies? Yeah. And and um, is is Rise of Skywalker going to be worth the investment, especially since Solo kind of flopped? Yes. Yeah. But we'll talk ourselves literally in circles about this topic. Talk ourselves into a grave talking about Star Wars. Yeah, and there's plenty of other videos on the internet that I'm sure are talking about. Are other people doing videos about Star, Star Wars? Wars? Yeah, so you, you can watch those. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna get into all that right now. <laughs> um, well, here's to 2020 and more years of forgettable junk. Forgettable junk. <laughs> I'm just gonna warm up my coffee a little. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs>